Okay, so we're going to look at an application of the antiderivative. Uh, this one is about the population of Phoenix. So what we have is the rate of change of the population in Phoenix can be modeled by the function p prime of t equals 11.7e to the 26 thousandths t. t is the number of years since 1960 and p of t is in thousands of people per year. In 1980, Phoenix had a population of 790,000. So the first thing to notice is this is not P of T, this is P prime of T. Okay, this function gives us the rate of change. The first thing we're asked to find is the function that gives us the actual population. So P prime of T, remember, is the derivative of P. So p prime of t is the derivative of p of t, which means that p of t is the antiderivative of p prime. So if I'm going to find p of t, I need to find the antiderivative of p prime, in other words, the indefinite integral of p prime. So what I need to do is compute the indefinite integral of my p prime function with respect to t. I don't know why I put the t down here. It's supposed to be up here. Um, 11.7 is just a constant. So remember, we can factor that clear out of the integral, or we can just remember that uh, my answer should have a factor of 11.7 in it. And then I just need to take the antiderivative of e to the 26 thousandths t, which if I use the rule, that's 1 over 26 thousandths times e to the 26 thousandths t. And then since this is an indefinite integral, we also have to add uh, some unknown constant, because when I take the derivative of this, um, any constant term at the end would result in the correct answer. So I have to account for that. Um, to simplify, I'll take the 11.7 and divide by the 26 thousandths. Uh, what I get here is a preliminary function for population. Uh, that would be 450 e to the 26 thousandths t plus c. Now, this function is not all that useful, uh, again, because if I plug in a t value, uh, this function is still going to give me infinitely many possibilities uh, because this uh, capital C could literally be anything. So I need to do a little bit better. Um, and what I'm going to do is use the piece of data that they gave me. Uh, in 1980, Phoenix had a population of 790,000. So I'm going to use uh, this piece of data to determine what this uh, C value is. So 1980, uh, that would be a T value of 20. Because remember, uh, this model starts from 1960, uh, so 1980 would represent a t-value of 20, and a population of 790,000 uh, would be a p-value of 790. Because uh, again, it says that our rate of change is in thousands of people per year, so 790,000 uh, would be 790 in this model. So what I really want to do is plug in the point uh, 2790 into this function. Okay, so if I replace my population with 790 and I replace time with 20, I can solve for C. In fact, C is going to be 790 minus 450 e to the 26 thousandths times 20 and you can do that on your calculator, uh, you should get approximately 33.1. So with that C value, we have an even better uh, function for population. And this is better because now if I plug in some year, uh, I'll get the, the approximate population, okay? So now I can use this function to predict the Phoenix population in any year that I want, okay? 
Um, I asked you specifically here to find the population in 2019, so we simply need to know what t-value corresponds to 2019. Uh, I just worked back from 1960. Uh, 2019 would be 59 years later. So I just want to find p of 59, which would be 450 e to the 26 thousandths times 59 plus 33.1 and if you do that on your calculator you should get approximately 2119.6 and again remember that's in thousands of people so I would multiply that by a thousand and that would give me uh, 2,119,600 people. So according to this model, uh, the Phoenix population 2019 will be uh, about 2.1 million people. Okay, I don't know how accurate that is because I haven't been in Phoenix in 2019 yet, but that's our, uh, that's our prediction based on this model. Okay. So let's look at one more. Uh, here we have a marginal cost function. This is the marginal cost for producing the xth unit of a product. Uh, again, uh, depending on how many products we're producing, this is going to give us a different value, and it's, it's approximately the uh, cost per item okay, at that particular level of production. Now, based on this, can we find a total cost function? Okay. Now again, notice the marginal cost, and we've talked about this before, the marginal cost is the derivative of the cost. Which means cost is the antiderivative of marginal cost. So if I want to come up with a cost function, I want to come up with a cost function, I need to compute the indefinite integral of my marginal cost function. And my variable here is x, so I'm going to compute the integral with respect to x. Okay, so then I'll just use my properties. Uh, the the antiderivative of x to the third power would be x to the fourth power divided by 4, and then the derivative of x would be x to the second power over 2 and then don't forget your arbitrary constant. Uh, I can simplify this a little bit. These 2's will cancel and what I'm going to have is a cost function of 1 fourth x to the fourth power minus x squared plus c. Now if we're talking about a cost function, what would this c represent? Okay. Well, notice we're given the fixed cost is $6,500. Okay. What that means is this, uh, this whole enterprise here is going to cost me this much money before I produce anything. Okay. So if I produce zero units, the cost is going to be $6,500. And then the cost will go up from $6,500 depending on how many units I produce. Okay, So if the fixed cost is $6,500, that means that C of 0 is $6,500. Okay? That's my fixed cost. That's my cost that has nothing to do with how many units I'm producing. Okay, So I can use the fixed cost to determine what this C is. I'm just going to plug in 0, 1 fourth, 0 to the fourth power minus 0 to the second power plus C, and that's supposed to equal $6,500. And if you look at that, these two terms are just going to be 0, so all I'm left with is C equals $6,500. So in our cost function, the constant term is always going to be the fixed cost. Okay? Which means my cost function in this particular case is going to be 1 fourth x to the fourth power minus x squared plus $6,500.
and then I could use this function to compute uh, a total cost of any given number of any given number of units.